Oh yes, it is time. It is time. It is time. Look at this, my friends. Do you see this? Do you have your burritos? Yum, 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 yum. I hope you all brought your burritos because this is a burrito party. You know what I'm saying? And I just want to start off by saying that I just had a surprise visit by a couple of viewers, Katie and Frank, and they dropped off some Humex for me. Oh, this stuff is so good. Mm. Some of you might know this, but I have COVID. I tested positive about four days ago. The symptoms have been very mild. I'm good to go, but I have been quarantining. I haven't been doing anything, unfortunately. Uh, I can't even see Amelia. It's so sad. Um, but here I am. And also, I, we were supposed to go to the desert this weekend. I'm not going to be able to do that because I can't get Amelia sick because she is traveling. So it looks like we have a lot of people showing up here in the chat. So good to see you on this wonderful Tuesday. Remember, this is a burrito party. I hope you have your burritos. I know I can't see them, but I hope you're eating burritos or something tasty. My burrito has Valentina hot sauce in it. I'm going to get some, get some whoop whoops for some Valentina. This is one of my favorite hot sauces. Um, it also has the Amy's beans in here. The Amy's, you've, you've seen them on my channel, the organic refried beans. Mm, and it has vegan cheese in there too. So tell me about your burritos over here. And the reason why I did this is because A, I have COVID. I can't really do anything right now. I miss all of you. The Mexico series just ended. So feel free to ask questions over here in the chat, 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 chat section. I will try to get to as many as I can. It can sometimes be overwhelming because they start flying up like crazy. Um, but just want to let you know that it means the world to me that you're here, that you watch my videos, and that we're going to eat some burritos together. Ole, 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 ole. Look at this burrito. <laughs> All right. So I'm just going to take a bite here. Give me a second. Everybody else, let's take a, a 15 second pause to have a bite of our burritos. Okay, here we go. Mmm. <laughs> Sorry, is it rude to speak with my mouth full? Mm. I hope I don't choke on YouTube Live. That'd be pretty horrible, huh? There's nobody here to give me the Heimlich maneuver. <laughs> All right. I'm going to wash it down with some Humex from my friends, Katie and Frank, who just... Drop this off at my house. Mm. Yum e Buen provecho. All right, so I'm looking at some of the questions over here. Am I doing Ragbri? Asked John Olson. I really hope to do Ragbri. It's on my calendar. That's all I can say right now. There's some other adventures that are close to it. And if everything goes right, I will be able to do Ragbri. Uh, what else do we have over here? Everybody's asking about Ragbri. We should all meet up at Ragbri, I think. We should have a big fiesta at Ragbri with uh, all of our friends. Is John riding a priority bicycle? No, he's not. He had a custom frame made. It's a titanium bike, actually. John is very fancy. He has a titanium bike now. It's not a priority. But he did decide to get the pinion and gates, so I can see why you'd be confused, because it looks like a priority bike. Um, here we go. Do I ever plan on doing the Jordan Trail? I would love to. Going out to Jordan would be incredible. Um, but it's not on my plans for this year. Let's see. <laughs> Let's see. Do you ride in Europe? So that is something I'd like to talk about. Yes, I hope to ride in Europe this summer. I think some of you might know this, but my goal is to ride the length of Sweden. I was an exchange student in Sweden way back in 1997, 98. I love the country. I'm still close with my host family. And I've always wanted to go way up north above the Arctic Circle and check out the midnight sun, right, during midsummer. And so my goal is to start way up north and ride south and end where I lived as an exchange student. So that'll answer your question there about riding in Europe, because Sweden is indeed Europe. So I hope to do that maybe in June or July. I don't know exactly when it's all going to happen. Okay. I hope you recover swift and easy. Thank you. So far, COVID 
has been very mild. I am vaccinated and boosted, and I there's no doubt that is helping me through this. And uh, I'm uh, excited that it's been a very mild case because I, I have some friends my age who are also very strong and athletic, and COVID has completely knocked them out, and they haven't been able to get back to running like they normally would. So I know some people think it's uh, not that serious, and uh, in some cases it isn't that serious, but in some cases it is definitely a serious disease, virus. Humex. Mm. All right. What else do we have? New Zealand. Did I find a house to buy? I have not found a house to buy yet. I still live in this tiny apartment. That's it right there. That's about as big as it is. <laughs> All the bikes are downstairs. Oh, we've got somebody from Nebraska. Hello, Aliska. Cool name, Aliska Chapman. Okay, we got a guy named Mark currently on a bike tour in Japan. Oh, right on. And he's logged in while he's on a bike tour. I hope you're not pedaling right now, Mark. That's very cool. I'd love to ride in Japan someday. I've heard it's a great place to ride bikes. Dune Digger says, November 2020, COVID almost took my life. Oh, man, I'm glad it did not. Um, it, it's a serious thing. Some people get hit very, very hard by this. Will Amelia be doing bike packing with me? Yes! So we were going to go to the desert and do the White Rim Trail this weekend. But because of COVID, we are not going to do that anymore because I don't want to get her sick. Or she has to start traveling very soon. So we are putting that on hold, but we will find something to do together. Amelia has one of those real jobs, a nine to five with a limited amount of vacation. So she is not able just to go on uh, trips with me all the time, but we will definitely plan some trips together. I can't wait to show her what traveling by bike is all about you know many of you know it's magical it's fun you know it can be physically exhausting but it puts you in places that are just beautiful and you see the best sunrises and sunsets and sleeping under the stars and you know you know what it's all about uh, oh amelia's in here yes i will she says hi amelia boone so in the last video that you saw you saw me talking about why i wanted to leave a little bit early and uh, one of the main reasons is because of Amelia and uh, it's, uh, she's wonderful. She's so amazing and I'm so excited to share her with you. She is uh, just one of those types of people who just make you just feel good. You know, I feel good about life when I'm with Amelia. Oh, somebody's asked about the Miss the Burritos. No, the burritos are still here. I just can't talk and eat a burrito at the same time, but there it is. It is a bean burrito, of course, with Amy's refried beans and a lot of Valentina. I love Valentina hot sauce. I hope you're all eating burritos because uh, burritos are good for the soul. Are you going to take another bite, everybody? Let's have a 15-second burrito bite break. Give me a second here to chill. Let's see. Somebody from Guadalajara. Thank you for inspiring this Mexico living gringo to love Mexico as much as you do. So yes, I, as you saw in this last video series, if you've seen the Baja series, you know that I really love Mexico. It holds a very special place in mi corazón. I love the people. I love the culture. I love the food. I love the music. I love the landscapes. And the people in Mexico are just very carefree and fun loving. And I just mix well with those people. You'll see like in the videos, like I meet somebody and immediately they were hanging out. Like we've been best buds for a long time. And that's just kind of like the, the Mexican way. They're just so warm and, and welcoming and generous. And, uh, you know, I, I know that Mexico will always be a big, you know, big thing for me throughout life going forward. I will always find a way to travel there and uh, spend as much time as I can in Mexico. Oh, we got Nico from Austria, right? He got one of the Trek checkpoints. He's doing his first overnighter this weekend. Good job, Nico. Have fun. Oh, hey, it's Buses, Bikes, and Beer. Hey, you all, if you want to follow a really fun YouTube channel, Buses, Bikes, and Beer, they are going to ride their bikes across the 
the country this summer on Priority Apollo Bikes. And they are really fun and they have great energy. They have lots of videos about RAGBRAI. So go check out Buses, Bikes, and Beer. Um, oh, so, so MB is on there, not Brentley. Okay, good. All right. So Buses, Bikes, and Beer. Dune Digger, I like all the burrito emojis. Okay, looks like Marshall Mesa in Boulder is open again. Let's ride. Okay, I'm ready. Once I'm done with COVID, I'd love to get out of my house. Woo! Let's see. We got Chris Bates from Mesa, Arizona. Oh, Sophia Pickle with a very important question. What is a whammy? I get this question all the time. So when I say no crashies, no flatties, no whammies. People ask, what's the difference between a crashy and a whammy? Well, a whammy is anything crazy and unexpected. Like a crash is very, you know, you crash, you fall off your bike. That's what a crash is. But a whammy, you know, what is a whammy? What does that mean? It could be a crash, but it could be something else, right? So a whammy could be you getting chased by a uh, swarm of murder hornets. That would be a whammy. That would suck real bad, right? So that would be a whammy. Or let's say, you know, lightning is striking all over and you get hit by lightning. That would be a big whammy. Um, maybe a sinkhole appears out of nowhere and you fall at a sinkhole. That would be a whammy. <laughs> you get what I mean? Whammies are just kind of ridiculous and you definitely don't want to have any whammies. So that's why I always say no whammies. And if you want to know the origin of that little chant, there was a TV show back in the 80s called Press Your Luck. And people would have this little like plunger thing. And, you know, I forget how it all went, but they go, no whammies, no whammies, big money, big money, no whammies. And you didn't want the whammy because the whammy would come and take away all the, the money that you accumulated. So quick story about the whammies. There you go. Now we all know. Okay, you can stop asking me questions about whammies. <laughs> all right, let's see what we else have here. Can you bike pack on a road bike? Well, bike packing is technically off-road and dirt. So on a road bike, that'd be difficult. But you can, of course, travel by bike on a road bike on roads and stuff. So it's, you know, there's not really a whole lot of difference other than, you know, touring and bike packing. You know, touring is for roads. Bike packing is is kind of for dirt. What's up, street rats? <laughs> Getting robbed is a big whammy. That is true. My buddy, <laughs> my buddy up there in Ohio, Street Rats 419. He's got a great YouTube channel as well. If you want to check out his stuff, he has he does a lot of cool social rides like we do here in Boulder. Some of you, if you follow my Instagram, which you should all follow my Instagram, I post a lot more daily stuff on Instagram if you want to like see what I'm up to in daily life. But every Thursday, I definitely talk a lot about the Thursday cruiser ride here in Boulder and it is so fun. I've been doing it for about 20 years and we just get dressed up in goofy clothes. We ride cruiser bikes, we honk our horns, we ring our bells and we just ride around town at a very casual pace and have as much fun as possible. You know, our old saying was that there's no spandex allowed. So it's definitely a casual ride. All right, Elwa TC871, I've been wondering about you, man. I'm glad that you are still around. I haven't seen your comments, and I'm glad that you're you're out there, Amir. Uh, I was a little worried, man, so good to see you. Cheers to New Jersey, my buddy Amir. Mm. All right. Any chance of coming to Brazil anytime soon? Man, I can't. I would say no. The answer is no, not anytime soon, but I would definitely love to come to Brazil someday because I've heard amazing things. I love the Latin American world. And uh, I know that Brazil, Brazilian people have a vibe in them. And you know that I get along well with those types of people. So does everybody have their burritos? Huh? Are y'all eating your burritos? I'm gonna take another bike here, a bite. And uh, give me a little 15 second break to chew my burrito. And you can all take this opportunity to also chew your burritos. Mm. <laughs> Sweet Blast is hungry. Mm -mm -mm. Shelly had tacos today. Mm -mm -mm. Barry Graham asking about Sweden. Sweden's looking good. I was just on Kamut yesterday. It's my favorite navigating app, putting together a route for the length of Sweden. So it's coming together. 
Okay, somebody just asked, I'm gonna, I might mess up your name, Gayathri, favorite part about living in Boulder? Hard to say, I'm born and raised here, so I love Boulder with all of my heart. You know, my lifelong friends are here. I'm involved with a lot of different events and projects and nonprofits. Of course, I love the nature of Boulder. You've seen it in my videos. The mountains are stunning. But my favorite part, man, ah, here we go. My favorite part about Boulder is my mom. She lives in, she lives in Boulder. So I definitely, that's, it's important, right? That's the only answer it could be. My mama. Oh, right, right on, Amir. He's making tacos later tonight. Yep, bikepacking Sweden. Let's see. Um, do I like El Morro in Puerto Rico? Uh, yes, I do like El Morro in Puerto Rico. Oh, Amelia is helping me out. There's so many questions. She just texted me. Uh, a dude paid you to answer this. Favorite section of the Continental Divide Trail. Plan on doing that again? Thank you, Amelia, for bringing this to my attention. <laughs> I appreciate it. Favorite part of the Continental Divide Trail, the Great Divide, the GDMBR, I would say, was the Montana section. It's just so beautiful. Way up there out north. Uh, you get a little bit of the Canadian Rockies. It's the deep forest. So beautiful. The small towns in, in Montana are stunning. And I say this knowing full well that the Great Divide spends a lot of time in Colorado, too. And you all know how much I love Colorado. Um, but I would say that Montana is my favorite section of the Great Divide. If any of you are just looking for like a section of it, you can't spend your whole summer riding bikes, Montana. And there's so many creeks and rivers to jump in at the end of the day. It looks like Ian just gave me 20 Canadian dollars. Da -da -da -da. Cheers, my friend. I appreciate it. Victory. Uh, how did I learn Spanish? I've been getting this question a lot lately. And the answer is, I did not take Spanish seriously when I was in high school. I did not see how it was going to help my life. I thought it was silly. I, you know, my family speaks English. All my friends speak English. Why do I need to speak Spanish? So I really didn't study and I didn't learn much. It was not until I studied abroad in Guadalajara, Mexico in college that I really started to learn Spanish. And then I learned the importance of it. And it's become something that I work at all the time. Uh, I love speaking Spanish. I love learning new words every day. And I love interacting with Spanish speaking people. When you can speak the local language of wherever you're going, it just opens up a whole new world. And you've all seen that in my videos. There's been many times where speaking Spanish has been an absolute key part of my experience. And uh, I love it. So that's how I learned Spanish. And then I lived in Honduras for two and a half years working in the Peace Corps. And I lived in a tiny village in the middle of nowhere. And that's really how I uh, solidified my Spanish. I mean, I mean, I can't even speak English right now. I don't know what language to speak in. <laughs> Swedish, Spanish, or English. Uh, 3D Obsession just gave me $4.99 to answer a very important question. How many burritos do you eat per year? How many days are there in a year? <laughs> That's how many burritos. I eat a lot of burritos. I'm not going to say every single day I eat burritos, but I eat them a lot for sure. It's my go-to food that's just, they're just easy to make and they're pretty healthy and they make me happy. All right, let's see. Chris Dick says, come to Canada, Manitoba. I would love to ride more in Canada. You all know John and Mira are Canadian and they have a special place in my heart for sure. And I want to go up there and ride in Canada. Although John and Mira are not going to be in Canada for years. They're going to be on the road now for a long time. So somebody else will have to be my Canadian bike tour guide. Let's see. What else do we have here? Um, oh, this is a very good question. Jim in DC just asked, but does Amelia eat burritos? <laughs> Amelia, if you're still listening, I don't know if you are. Amelia lives down the road in another town called Golden, so it's about a half hour away. She's far away. Um, Amelia is doing a great job at learning to love burritos. I would say that before meeting me, burritos and beans specifically were not her favorite food. Not because she doesn't like them, but because it gives her horrible gas. Ah, just kidding. <laughs> I hope you're listening. 
Um, anyway, um, so she's so sweet. She's so sweet. When we start, first started dating, she told me that every night she eats a tablespoon of beans so she can build up her tolerance. Oh my God, John and Mira are here. John and Mira, everybody say hi to John and Mira. Their channel is called Omni Tierra. If you haven't subscribed yet to their channel, it's over here, Omni Tierra. There's a little avatar of Mira's face. Hey dude, good to see you, my man. Oh, this is fun. We got all of our, <laughs> all of our special people here, Amelia and John. <laughs> He says, I love Dozeritos. That's right. So John actually came through Boulder this winter when he was working out getting his new bike. And I took him to the Walnut Cafe, which is the cafe that Dana owns. And we got him the Dozerito. Did you all know that I have a burrito named after me here at a restaurant in Boulder? Well, now you do. Dana and I dreamed up this burrito. It's a vegetarian burrito. And it's been on the menu for about five years. And a dollar from the sale of every one of these burritos goes to Dana's foundation that gets kids on bikes. So you're eating a burrito and you're getting kids on bikes. That's a good deal. So if you're ever in Boulder, go to the Walnut Cafe and get the Duzerito. And it is, it's got the John and Mira seal of approval. All right, let's see. Um, Oh, yes. And the beers, buses, buses and bikes people, Brentley and Mary Beth, had a Dozerito in January. Some other people that have given it the seal of approval. Uh, speaking of burritos, can you guys give me another 15-second uh, burrito break so I can take a bite? Look at that. Isn't that looks so yummy. Yummy! Give me a little break here. You guys can start asking questions, and I'll be back with you in 15 seconds. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Ah, thank you for that little break. Gave me some time to read some of these comments. Huh. So RV Reviscara says, will John make it to the Netherlands? I bet he will. He's going to be riding around the world. I know he's going to go through Europe. I don't know exactly what his route is, but you should follow John and Mira on YouTube. And um, if not YouTube, follow them on Instagram, it's at Mira underscore La underscore Perra. And uh, you can stay up to date with uh, all of their adventures. Uh, tips for traveling with pets. Well, I mean, that's really a question for John. And Mira isn't really, I don't think of Mira as a pet. I think of Mira as like an equal. <laughs> like there's really no taking care of Mira. Mira takes care of us. You just got to give Mira a little bit of food and water. Um, so I'm not great at uh, those kind of questions about traveling with pets. But maybe someday I'll get some sort of a small dog and bike pack with that dog. I don't know. All right. Jag 9900. I'm doing the San Juan Huts tour this year. Thanks to your videos. Any advice? So a lot of you have probably seen videos about the San Juan Huts. It's a cool hut system here in Colorado where you can just bike from hut to hut to hut. And you don't need to bring a lot of food or gear because the huts have everything. So my advice is just to have fun. That's you're taking the the luxurious route of bike packing. You don't you don't you're not going to be riding a heavy bike, and you get to eat all sorts of junk food when you get to the hut at the end of the day. Joseph says, any advice on the GDMBR? I mean, it's such a long trail. You're going to be going through all sorts of different ecosystems and landscapes and weather systems. I would say, and this goes for everything. People ask me all the time, what's the biggest piece of advice you have for bikepacking? And it's uh, bring a good attitude because you never know what's going to happen. You never know how things are going to shake out. Um, weather can completely blockade you. Maybe the the mud or the, the dirt you're riding on gets all wet and you can't pass through it because there's a rainstorm. You just got to wait it out. Or maybe there's hail or maybe there's wind or anything and in all those situations a good attitude will get you out of it and you just have to be cool with changing things up and be like all right this is not how i planned on doing this and but this is how it's going to be and it's all part of the adventure it's all part of being out there and surrendering to something bigger than you right and just have fun and remember at the end of the day you might be in physical pain or the weather might suck but you're on your bike on a bike trip and that is awesome 
Any news on Dana? How is she doing? Dana's doing great. I need to get Dana back on the channel. It's been a little while. Dana is awesome. And uh, yeah, we need to get her on an adventure for sure. Let me take a sip here real quick. Ah. Let's see. When am I coming back to New York City? Hopefully this summer. I will go back to New York City and hang out with my friends at Priority and do another event, another live presentation. And hopefully all my NYC people can, can be there. What do you and Amelia have planned to do together? Or are you going to include her in your videos? Asked Caroline Covell. Um, Amelia is really shy and she doesn't want to be in my videos. Ah, just kidding. No, we have some adventures planned. We actually were supposed to go to the desert this weekend and do her very first bike packing trip on the White Rim. But because I got COVID, we can't go. So that's unfortunate. So we're going to try to do something in June. And I'm really, really excited to, to share what I love so much with somebody that I love so much. It's like it's going to be an overload of awesomeness whenever Amelia and I get out there on bikes. She's an incredible athlete. I have no doubt that she can kick my butt on a bike or whatever. And so we're going to have a good time. Let's see. Have I ever been to Kansas and tried out those trails? I have ridden my bike through Kansas before when I've gone across the United States. And, you know, people like to make fun of Kansas and some of the other flyover states. Oh, there's nothing going on. They're just boring and flat. But I always find charm in those states. There's a, there's a, a lot of beautiful, there's a lot of beauty out there for sure. So I've enjoyed my time in Kansas and even Nebraska and Iowa. And I love small town America. I love the people. I love sitting at a small town cafe and just learning about the local politics or, or whatever it is. And uh, it's my favorite part of traveling. I think You've all heard this from me many times. It's, it's the people that make my adventure special. Just like all of you right now, you're making this moment very special for me. I love connecting with other humans. I love learning about what makes people excited about their daily lives. I love learning about new, you know, town fairs or events or whatever it is, a history. I love it. And so even in a place like Kansas or Nebraska, I'm sorry to be picking on your two states. Uh, there's there's a lot of charm and a lot of beauty. Joseph Hirsch says, $5 GDMBR 2023 and Dana's Bike Foundation is amazing. Thank you, Joseph. I really appreciate that $5. I don't even know what it's called. Is it like Super Chat or something? Uh, yeah. Oh, what's up, Amir? Can't wait to meet my new boo. What's up? <laughs> You're going to love Amelia. I am like, I'm on Amelia high right now. I can't stop talking about Amelia to everybody I meet in real life. She's my favorite thing to talk about. And it makes me really, really happy to have somebody like her in my life. You know, I'm 43 years old and my longest relationships have all been fairly short in the world of relationships, about a year. And I wondered if I was ever going to meet somebody that was going to be the one, I guess you, you would say. And, uh, I have and it's amazing and it feels so good and a lot of you who have long-term partners or are married you you know the feeling and uh, now I'm part of the club and it's amazing cheers everybody got their burritos out let's have a burrito cheers ole 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 show me your burrito on this lovely Tuesday Chris Barker says hell yeah small towns what's up buddy how you doing Chris Let's see, what do you think prevents more people from bikepacking? Money, knowledge, routing, or inspiration? Thank you, Logan. That's a great question. You know, I understand that bikepacking or any type of long physical adventure is very overwhelming, especially if you've never done something like this before. And you can sit in bed at night and worry about, you know, navigation and where you're going to find clean food and water and where are you going to camp and is it going to be dangerous and you've got cars everywhere buzzing by you, I can see that it would be very overwhelming. Um, and a lot of different aspects of that would, would hold somebody back from, from bikepacking. Um, and uh, 
I just always tell people like, just go somewhere close by to start out. Go somewhere that's not too overwhelming. That you just ride your bike with your camping gear, you spend the night and you come home. And then you're like, okay, I got a taste of this. This is fun. You know, you get to practice setting up all your gear. You get to practice sleeping in a tent, which, you know, for some people is uncomfortable. I mean, it's definitely not as comfortable as your bed at home, right? But the beauty of bike packing outweighs all of the potential negative aspects of being out there. Uh, the magic of bike packing, as you see through all the videos that I make on my channel, is something really special. And I always tell people, I feel more connected to myself when I'm out there. I feel more connected to nature and I feel way more connected to the other humans. I meet so many wonderful people on my trips all over the world. And for me, my bicycle is a tool to interact with different cultures and people. And I get to see places that I would normally not see if I was in a tour bus and I was flying by or a car or whatever. When you're on a bike and you're going slow, I call it life at 15 miles an hour, you really get to experience every step of the journey. And sometimes it's hard. I'm, you've seen in my videos, sometimes it's really uncomfortable, but it's also a beautiful, beautiful way to move through life on a bicycle. So I hope you enjoyed my TED Talk. Thanks for coming. <laughs> just kidding. Hey, Bear Wilkie just gave me $10. Thank you, Bear. And you got a little dancing lemon head over there. Thank you. I appreciate it. Um, Dale says, your channel is awesome. Thank you, Dale. I think you're awesome. Renee Acevedo says, I pass a tunnel in my ride every time I'm training with ole, 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 ole. Yeah, it makes riding your bike through a tunnel a lot more fun when you sing the ole song. And, you know, you know my videos, you know me, I'm a little dorky or a lot dorky and the no crashies, no whammies, the olays, all the singing I do. Yeah, it's dorky. Like I, I fully admit that it's a little goofy, but it's what makes life fun. Like I don't take myself too seriously. And because of that, I'm always having a good time. And, you know, of course I have bad days like any other humans and I have parts of my life where you know, I, I question all the time what I'm doing. You saw this in the last video. And, uh, you know, but at the end of the day, being dorky is a good thing. So, ole. Mark C says, do I have a P.O. box? I need to send you a copy of the Michigan Trails magazine. I don't have a P.O. PO box, but if you write me a direct message, I'll give you my address and you can just send it to me. How's that sound? Um, Mark C. Oh, Sean Austin lives in Kearney, Nebraska. I rode through there on my way to uh, Ragbri a few years ago. And oh, I just got to tell you, oh, see, look at this. I just got to, this just like, you know, when Amelia texts me, it just makes my heart grow. It's like one of those really cheesy things. And she just texted me and it's, she said, love seeing you do your thing. It makes me so proud. And I love you. <laughs> I love Amelia so much. <sighs> You can tell that I'm in love, right? Wendy says, have you camped in Florida? I'm in Florida, but from Ohio, and I'm afraid to camp in Florida. <laughs> yeah, you know, there's some there's some scary stuff in Florida. I camped all over Florida once, and one night I got attacked by fire ants, and I had all these welts all over my body when I woke up. That wasn't fun. <laughs> you know, when you're camping in tropical places, there's a lot more... There's a lot more bugs, which are usually big, scary bugs. And, uh, you know, I don't have a whole lot of advice for camping in Florida other than zip up your tent at night because you don't want to wake up to some creepy crawly under your pillow. Okay, um, here we go. Is everyone done eating already? Asked somebody. I still have half a burrito. I, it would be gone by now if I wasn't talking so much. Uh, I eat my burritos pretty quickly. But because I am taking this live show very seriously, I'm not going to sit here and just eat in front of you, you know? <laughs> okay, we got Chris from Huntington Beach. What's up? Okay. 
Have I ever, uh, have I ever thought of bike packing in Africa or Asia? Yeah, I've definitely thought of it, but I have not done it yet. I've actually never even been to Africa. I would love to go to Africa someday. I've traveled all over Latin America. I know Latin America really well. I've been all over Europe. I've been over, I've been to Asia quite a few times and, uh, there's a lot more to see. There really is. And you know, what's interesting about meeting Amelia is that I don't really want to travel as much anymore because I don't want to be away from her. And I know you're all thinking, no, <laughs> we want you to travel. <laughs> don't worry. I will figure it out. But for the last 15 years or so, I have been traveling about 150 to 200 days a year. And as a single person, that's no problem. Like it, for me, it's exciting. I get to live this Indiana Jones life um, because, but I, cause I never really had relationships, you know, of course I missed my family and of course my mom, but this is the first time in my life where I'm like, I don't really want to be away from Amelia all that much. I I'll miss her too much. And I really want to like make this relationship work and I don't want to be far away because how, how strong of a relationship can you have if you're never home? So I'm going on lots of Amelia tangents, but, uh, yeah. Okay. Amir says he needs to ask me a very special favor. Ooh, what's up, buddy? Check your email. <laughs> you got it, buddy. I'll check my email. Andrew says, any tips on helping your girlfriend enjoy bikepacking? Uh, this goes for everybody. And I get a lot of questions about beginner bikepackers that are overwhelmed. Um, I would say, you know, to start out in a, you know, at a chill pace, you don't want to drive somebody into the ground their very first time they're on a bike. You want to enjoy bike packing. It's not a race. There's no reason why you need to, you know, push yourself at all times. And some of you are probably thinking, well, Ryan, we, we've seen you go through the pain cave many times. I personally like to push myself at times, but there's also times where I just stop and I chill and I take it all in. You've seen all those parts of my videos where I just stop and I'm like, so quiet. I love it. Or I'll take time to film flowers. <laughs> it sounds silly, but I love checking out flowers. So it's really important to enjoy what you're doing. Because if you're out there bikepacking and you're not having fun, guess what? You're probably not going to bikepack a whole lot more because you think of bikepacking as just suffering. And to me, it's not suffering. To me, it's a magical, magical experience and a, just a, a fun way to meet people and see the world. Okay, let's see. Man, there's so many questions. You guys are just like off the wall right now with questions. Let's see. Did I have the chance to know Johan? Uh, Renee asked me. I never met Johan and I'm sure um, a lot of you know who I'm talking about. Johan, I can't pronounce his last name, but he had all sorts of wonderful YouTube videos, very long videos. Um, of bikepacking around the world. And, you know, of course I, I watched his videos, but I never got to know him, but he definitely seemed like a very sweet soul, a very kind human. And I'm sure I would have loved him. Um, but he passed away, what, in February or something. And it's uh, it's been a hard uh, hit for the bikepacking community because I know tens of thousands of people really, really loved him and his videos. And uh, so to answer your question, I never met him, um, unfortunately. But uh, I feel like all of us bike packers, most people have seen his videos. So we take a little bit of his spirit everywhere we go. And so that's a way that we can honor him and, and spread the Johan love around the world. Okay, Caleb Wilson just asked me, and he paid me money for this question. Would you ever be up for riding from Boulder down to Mike and Kimberly's race in the canyons? He's talking about... Uh, the, I'm guessing Caballo Blanco, is that what you're talking about? The canyons in uh, northern Mexico? Yeah, I, I would love to ride my bike in the Copper Canyons in Mexico. Uh, you've, a lot of you have seen my videos um, about that race, the Born to Run race from the book Born to Run. It's called the Caballo Blanco. It's a 50-mile race. It was my first uh, you know, 50-mile race of my life, and it's a magical place. So, yeah, I would love to ride my bike down there because those canyons are stunning. Okay. Let's see. We got somebody, Luis, desde Tijuana, Mexico. Hola, amigo. ¿Cómo estás? I don't know how many Mexicans are out there, but uh, 
Muchas gracias por todo. Me encanta su país. Es uh, uno de mis lugares favoritos en todo el mundo. Me encanta la cultura, la gente, la música, el modo de vivir, todo. Me encanta México. I just want to say I love you Mexicans out there. You took such good care of John and Mira and I when we were on our trip. And you always have. And I have a special place in my heart for uh, Mexicanos. All right. So Masumi just uh, paid me 10 bucks to answer this question. Wide foot cargo cage or king many things? I tie bike, so I'm a bit uh, biased. I uh, think you have a wide foot, so perhaps. Okay, so the question is essentially what's my favorite cargo cage on the bike? So cargo cages can hold bottles or gear. And I love the brand Widefoot. They're actually made in the United States. They're made now in uh, Fort Collins, Colorado. The company moved from Nebraska to Fort Collins. And they come in a lot of cool colors. And yeah, they're just very easy to use. All of my big silver bottles you see strapped to my bike, I use a, a Widefoot cage. And they're just tough. I've beaten the crap out of them and they still work. So hopefully, Masumi, that answers your question. I love Widefoot, but I haven't tried the... Um, the king cages. I have tried the salsa, salsa anything cage, um, but I, I love Widefoot. It's just a very small profile, easy to use. It works. So check out Widefoot if you're looking for some cargo cages. I'm not getting paid to say this. I just think they're a cool, tiny company. There's like three people who work there or something. Robert, saludos desde Jalisco. So Jalisco is a state in Mexico where Guadalajara is and also tequila. Did you all know that tequila is a city in Mexico? It's called tequila. And that's where most of the tequila in the world is made. And it's surrounded by agave fields. And you might be thinking, well, what's agave? Look, it looks like a giant aloe plant. And that's the plant that they use to distill and make into tequila, which is a close cousin to mezcal, which is made down in Oaxaca, which is down in southern Mexico. Okay, veggie tables. I like that avatar, by the way. Um, are there any states in the U.S. that you haven't bike packed yet? Do you have a personal favorite? Thank you, veggie tables. I haven't bike packed in South Dakota or North Dakota. I've heard there's some great routes up there. I have not bike packed in Alaska, which would be amazing. So beautiful. You know, Lael Wilcox is from there and she's ridden all over Alaska and I've watched her films and I really would love to go up there. Um, but I've ridden in most every single state because I've gone across the country four different times on four different routes and I've gone down both the east and the west coast and I've done little pieces of other things here and there. But my favorite state for bikepacking, like straight up adventure, like biking, I would say Utah. I love the, the Moab area. I love Canyonlands. I love the desert. It looks like another planet to me. It looks like planet Mars, or at least what I would think Mars would look like. And um, yeah, I got to say Utah. That, that's I grew up, or I shouldn't say grew up, but I started going to Moab for mountain biking when I was about 20 years old. And it is stunning. If you want to see some videos of that area, look up my white rim videos and woo, it'll blow your mind. Okay, let's see. Tom's View photogra Photography asks, can you do the trails you do, like the GDMBR, on the, on the bike, but stay in motels? So instead of camping, you stay in motels the whole time. You probably could. I mean, uh, for a lot of different routes, you could probably just travel with a credit card and just blast off from town to town to town. And you could probably pull it off. And that would be kind of a fun way to do it where you could travel really light because obviously you wouldn't need a camping gear. And, uh, you know, you'd sleep in a nice hotel room every night and wouldn't have to worry about fire ants. <laughs> so, yes, that, that should answer your question. I love my wife cycling club. I like that. Uh, you should try bikepacking in Asia. I definitely should. I would love to go there sometime. <laughs> Rage Master asks, do John and Mira drive and or own a car? <laughs> so I think John's being lumped into the same category as me because I don't drive. But John is a regular human and he does drive. He does um, 
know how to drive a car. And I don't think he has a car right now because he seriously sold everything. He left everything behind in Canada and they are on the road for the next five or six years cycling around the world. So uh, I don't think John's going to be driving anytime soon unless he rents a car somewhere. But why would you rent a car when you have an awesome bike and an awesome dog? Ooh, Alex from Romania. Very cool. I would love to go to Romania someday, right? Transylvania. That's where Dracula is from. Kid Mystic asking, uh, favorite burrito in Boulder? So there's a restaurant right across the street from my house called Tierra y Fuego, and I think they have the best burritos. They really do. Of course, you know, downtown Pearl Street has lots of Mexican restaurants, but Tierra Fuego is the best. Sean Huntley says, would love to see how your bikes will stand up to Alaskan glacial silt. Yeah, I don't, I don't know about that. But I mean, my bikes have stood up to Baja and Baja is about the roughest riding I've ever done in my life. Um, if, if you guys are just joining here, we've been going on for about, about 45 minutes now. Geez, there's 500 of you live right now, which I really appreciate. And this whole thing is about eating burritos together. So I hope either you started with the burrito or you finished a burrito or you brought another burrito because it's burrito time with your friend, Ryan Van Duzer. Here we go. Chris Dick says, I'm a runner and haven't done too much biking, but wondering if you have any running races planned. Oh, yes, I do. So um, there's a big race in Boulder called the Boulder Boulder, which I've been doing since I was a little kid, six years old. And it's been canceled the last two years because of the pandemic. So this year in late May, the Boulder Boulder is happening again. It's a 10K, so it's not like a long, crazy one. But I will be doing that race. And I will also be doing Leadville, the Leadville 100 once again. Last year, I had an incredible experience. It's also essentially how where I met Amelia. You know, I we had chatted a little bit online um, before I did Leadville. I knew of her because she's a big deal. And, but I'd never met her really until Leadville and she paced me from mile 60 to 75. And when she dropped me off, I don't know what happened during those 15 miles, but I, I was a mess. Those were the last 25 miles of Leadville were very difficult and I had to drag my ass across the finish line. So I want to go back to Leadville and finish stronger. So Leadville's on, on tap. I'm also going to do the Javelina hundred again. You've probably seen those Javelina videos on my channel. I love the desert. I love going out there. Again, it's all because of the community and the fun people and the party. And uh, yeah, so that's what I'm going to do right now. Trish McAllister says, are there any communities to find other solo bikers to bike pack with? I've been wanting to go on my first bike pack trip, but I'm hesitant to do it solo. That's a great question, Trish. Um, you know, the Adventure Cycling Association, I think it's adventurecycling.org. They have put together tons of routes all over the country. They created the Great Divide, actually, in 1996. I think they have forums where you can find people to ride bikes with. And so check them out. And if it doesn't say on the website, call them. They're cool. Be like, hey, how do I do this? They will, they will know uh, where to send you. Yeah, everybody smash that like button, says Zainan. I'm going to take a, a second here to drink some. My, my throat's getting tired because I have COVID. I have COVID, people. That's why I'm not out adventuring and I'm here eating burritos with you. Mm, yummy. Ah. Oh, Bill Hasty says, my 600 is on order. Would you change tires if doing a lot of gravel? Um, so the 600 is the priority 600. It's the bike that I've been using as my everyday commuter for the past four years. I think the tires it comes with now are a little bit different than the tires I got. Mine were fully slick. I think the 600 comes with a little bit of nubbin on the tire. So it should be good for gravel. But if you really want to get rowdy, yeah, I would change the tires to like, you know, nubbier tires. <laughs> is that is that a technical term? Nubbier? Okay, Michael P says, Ryan, how do you convince someone, me, to break down and buy a Priority 600X without seeing or giving one a five-minute test? Maybe I need to come to Boulder and have you give me a sales pitch. So that's the thing with buying a bike online. Um, priority is direct to consumer. They're not in stores. And I get this question a lot. Like, how can I try out a priority bike before buying it? And the answer is you can't. There are some forums on Facebook, like 
I think it's called Priority Riders and Friends or something. There's also a 600X specific group on Facebook. So you can join those groups and you can just put out a call and say, hey, I live in Phoenix or wherever. Does anybody else have a 600X I can try? That's one way to try one out. If you are in the Boulder area, I have definitely let people try out my bikes. So if you're near me and you want to try out one of them, let me know. Um, Rich M says, being a vegetarian, Ryan, how do you know your Mexican burritos don't have lard in the beans? And so that's a very good question. And the, the answer is, I don't know. And a lot of times, like refried beans in Mexico are made with lard. And that's just kind of how it goes. You know, I'm picky when I'm in Boulder with what I put into my body. I always make sure it's vegetarian, but I fully understand that sometimes things are out of my control. And when I travel to other countries, I'm not always going to be able to eat the way that I want. I'll try my hardest, but if I'm, if I'm invited into somebody's home, for example, and they present a meal to me, I am not going to be all fuzzy, fussy and say, oh, no, no, I'm a vegetarian. I do not want to eat this meat. I will eat it. I will eat it in, in honor of them, essentially, because I know that they have invited me into their homes. And a lot of times these, these families are from humble means, and this is a very big deal for them to hand me a plate of food and I will eat it. And you've probably seen that in some of my videos where I will, um, I will eat whatever is given to me, essentially. Um, you know, I, I will, you know, I don't want it to get out of hand and have somebody <laughs> hand me like a, you know, a stack of ribs. But if, if there's lard in the beans, if there's a little bit of meat in a soup, we're all good. Okay. All right. Um, let's see. Let's see. Find me another good question. Oh, Gloria asked, what symptoms do I have? So I have COVID right now. I think you're all safe. Oh, I'm not giving you COVID. I promise. Um, the symptoms, I just a little minor cold uh, symptoms. You can probably hear my voice a little nasally. It's been, it's been easy, luckily. So a little bit of sore throat, a little bit of boogies in my nose. Uh, but other than that, like nothing major. The, the biggest bummer is I've just been stuck at home and I've had to cancel a bunch of uh, events uh, because I don't want to give anybody else COVID, of course. And uh, I visit my grandma all the time and she's 89 years old and I definitely don't want to give her COVID. So I've had to, you know, just stay home really. And that's why I wanted to do this because this is super entertaining for me and I appreciate you all being here. All right. I just saw one from Earl, Earl Styles. Um, he says, thank you for your CT inspiration. That means Colorado Trail. Earl is going to do the Colorado Trail this summer, and he's going to kick butt. Colorado Trail is one of my favorite adventures of my entire life. It was absolutely, you know, a difficult adventure. It pushed me physically and mentally, but at the end of it, it, it meant so much to me. Sometimes when you do really hard things in life, in the moment, it sucks. In the moment... You want to push a button that will magically get you out of there, but you push through it and you see what you're made of. And at the end of it, and sometimes, you know, weeks, months, years afterwards, you get to look back and be like, that was amazing. And I'm so glad that I didn't quit. And then I went all the way. And, you know, now, especially me, I document the adventures and I can look at it, you know, a year away from it or two years away from an adventure be like that was really unique and special and i'm so glad that i did it so uh have fun out there earl <sighs> darren says more nubs more hugs yes i like that it should be one of my new quotes uh matthew says would you ever see yourself riding any other bike for bike packing well right now i love the 600x obviously i designed it it's the bike that i always dreamed of having <laughs> and now it's here and i have it and you get to ride it as well if you want people can buy this bike it's a dream come true to have a, a bike on the market with my name on it um but yeah but I'm, I'm open to anything you know there could be another bike for me down the line maybe a 600x part two part two Let's see. Just Travel Around says, we love your channel. Thank you. I appreciate it. I'm feeling a lot of love right now because I've been stuck at home, kind of grumpy for the last 
five days. I was supposed to hang out with Amelia this weekend, and that didn't happen. I was supposed to see my mom on Mother's Day, and you know how much of a mama's boy I am, and that didn't happen. So I've been a little grumpy. So yesterday I woke up, and I was like, I am going to do a live stream with my YouTube friends. And here we are. And this is uh, definitely good for my soul. So thank you very much for all being here right now, but also for always watching my videos. It means the absolute world to me that I have this wonderful audience and you're all awesome people. And if you were all here right now, we would all be eating burritos together. And maybe someday I can organize some sort of like Guinness Book of World Records burrito eating dinner and you're all invited. How's that sound? You guys wanna to come to that party? Because I sure do. Let's see. Mark Putnam says guac 100%. Oh, I need some guac on this for sure. Okay. Um, Troy and Andrea's Little Adventures. Do you estimate how many calories you burn and how many you need to sustain to energy my ride, to fuel my rides? Uh, I don't really, I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> this is not very articulate. Blah, blah, blah. I eat as much as I can. When I'm on a bike trip, I eat a lot. And that's just how it is. And it's because I know I'm burning a ton of calories, but I don't like calculate it. And I, but I, it's not scientific. I just eat a lot of food. And when any, when any human is out there pushing their bodies past the limit, you're going to eat more um, than you're used to eating at home in day-to-day -day life. So just make sure to stay... Um, stay on top of that because you don't want to bonk bonking is the worst that's when your body is low on sugars and all these other nu nutrients that you need and when you're out there pushing your body it's just like a car you want to have like you know premium gas in there to keep you moving so uh, make sure to try to fuel yourself with healthy food and i know you're all thinking healthy food come on ryan you eat nutella all the time i get it i do i love nutella in the mornings but i do try to eat healthy food as well like beans. K Stobbs. This looks like a British person. Yes. 10 pounds. Carl Southport, UK. Planned bike pack around British coast. Want wild camp en route. Do you plan ahead for accommodation, water, food supplies en route? What devices do you use for navigation and keep charged? Okay. There's a lot of questions there. Um, <clears throat> I don't plan ahead for accommodation. I, cause I never know where I'm going to end up unless you're like very sure that you're going to end up at a certain town then maybe you can plan ahead and book a hotel but i never really know and i also like keeping the adventure open like let's say i meet somebody really cool at 2 p.m and they invite me into their home and dinner and they're like okay i'm gonna go here now so i don't plan ahead very much as far as food and water the same thing you know you just kind of take it as it comes you always want to have like a store a stock of energy bars and other things that you can eat just in case you you run low on food you want to have some emergency rations out there and as far as devices i use for navigation i love my phone and i love the app called Komoot. even google maps is great if you use the bicycle uh function and um Komoot is great they're out of germany if they're getting bigger and bigger but you can essentially put in a starting point and say i want to go from a to b and you can choose, like, I want to ride a gravel route, and it'll give you a gravel route. Or I want to ride a, mount, ride a mountain bike route, so they'll find something a little more chunky for you. And it's, it's really cool how it works. It's, it's amazing. So thank you, Kay Stobbs. I really appreciate it. And as far as keeping things charged, I just carry lots of extra batteries for all of my cameras. So, you know, five extra batteries for each electrical device. As far as my phone goes, I have a little you know, power bank that will uh, power my phone six times. And then, you know, every four or five days, I might stay at a hotel and then charge everything up. Erica Goldberg says, can you share some of your favorite memories from your experience in the Peace Corps? I've always wanted to join Peace Corps and would love to hear about them. Oh, I was actually just going through some of my old photos today of my Peace Corps experience. So for those of you who don't know, I lived in Honduras for two and a half years in a tiny village and I worked with kids and it was uh, the adventure of a lifetime, really, uh, the experience of a lifetime. As far as favorite memories, so I worked with kids and I lived in a neighborhood outside of a town, so like really like a tiny village situation. And every day after school, 
the kids would come over to my house and my house was set up kind of like a youth center. And I had all sorts of musical instruments and I had art supplies and the kids would come over and we would just play and we'd sing and we'd choreograph dances and we'd draw and we put up all the drawings all over my house. So my walls were very colorful. And that was just like an everyday occurrence for me in Honduras. These kids were, um, they were so sweet and I, I loved spending time with them. So I'd say that's one of my favorite experiences of, of being in Honduras. And it's just, it's a just different way of life. You know, I'm from Boulder, Colorado, which is, uh, you know, a very modern American city. I lived in a tiny village that, you know, I had electricity, but I didn't have running water. So it was a, a much more uh, basic way to live. And uh, everybody lives that way. And it was a good eye opener to see how most of the world lives outside of the, the Western world. Okay, we've got a question from Shelby Collins. Why do you choose not to use the camp stove while bikepacking? I get this question a lot. Thank you, Shelby, for the 1999. I appreciate it. You're so kind. You're so generous. I um, I just I'm a simple guy, and I can open open up a can of beans and put them in a tortilla and be very happy. And another reason is is I'm not a great cook. I I don't turn my stove on at home all that often. <laughs> you know, John from John and Mira always laughs at me because he brings a stove, or I guess most people who go out into the back country bring stoves to like cook those ready-made meals and stuff. Um, but I've just gotten away with very simple foods and it's always worked. You know, I'm not against it, maybe someday. Uh, oh, and here's another big thing. Most people bring stoves to make coffee every morning and I don't drink coffee. So uh, that's one of the main reasons why I don't have a stove, you know. Um, I hope that answers your questions, Shelby. All right. Um, wow. Okay. We got Kendall Newburn. Thank you so much for your content. I'm 61 and going to ride the Katy Trail this year. The most I have ridden is 40 miles in a day. I'm excited to give it a try. Thanks for the inspiration. Hey, Kendall, you're awesome. I'm so excited you're going to do the Katy Trail. The Katy Trail is, is beautiful. It's so fun. If you don't know what the Katy Trail is, it's the longest rail trail here in the United States, and it goes across the state of Missouri and finishes in St. Louis. And it's a rail trail, so it's railroad grade, so it's flat, so it's pretty easy to ride. And as railroads do, they go through towns about every 10 miles. So you're never far away from civilization. If you need food or water or a hotel, it's a very comfortable way to go bikepacking. And... Uh, I think it's about 250 miles total. So Kendall, you are in for a treat. I would love to bring my mom on that trail someday. And I can't believe this. Somebody, Joey Yao, if you're still on the live stream, he just gave me a super chat, 999. Joey, I met Joey when I was trekking in Nepal back in 2009. So way more than 10 years ago. And Joey, uh, man, I really connect with this guy. Just really great energy. And this is just an example of staying in contact with the people that I meet. You probably heard of the stories of, of Danny who gave me that special necklace that I wear. But I really try to stay in contact with everybody that I meet. It's, I don't want it just to be, you know, a 15 minute moment on the side of a road or in a small town. I want to stay connected to these humans. And so I do. And I call some of them on their birthdays or Christmas and we catch up. And this Joey guy, I can't believe it. I haven't heard from him in years. Uh, thank you so much, my friend. I really appreciate you being here and the 999. Caleb Wilson, how do you store food when riding in bear country? I get this question a lot and you're probably not going to like the answer. I don't do anything special. I keep my food on my bike and my bike is away from my tent, maybe sometimes 10 feet. I keep food out of my tent because that will just invite bears into your tent. But I always tell people bears and every other animal are terrified of humans. They smell humans and they stay far away. So I have luckily never had a bear encounter, even though I've traveled through bear territory a lot. I would say that the best reason to keep food out of your tent at night is to keep bugs out of your tent. Um, I, I would say you're going to deal with a lot more mosquitoes annoying the crap out of you than bears actually 
causing any problems. I know it can happen. Anything can happen out there, but uh, I do not hide my food in trees like they say to do in bear country, mainly because when I finish a day of bike packing, I'm exhausted. And the last thing I want to do is find a tree and hike my food up to the top. <laughs> all right. You guys are all so wonderful. My throat is starting to hurt because I've been talking now for ooh, over an hour. Ah. All right. Let's see. What other questions do we have? Let's do this for maybe another 10 or 15 minutes before I lose my voice completely. <laughs> Oh, okay. Alberto Guerra says, man, I have to ask you, I have received supposed messages from you on YouTube. These messages ask me to can't contact you at a number on WhatsApp or Telegram that it like saying that it's a prize. No, it is not a prize. It is spam. I'm sorry you've been getting these. I spent an hour today on YouTube trying to like delete this, this fake spam channel that keeps spamming all of you. I'm sorry, I have no prizes for you. <laughs> so no, if you get something that looks a little fishy, that says it's gonna have my picture on it, they're gonna try to trick you. No, it is not for me and there is no prize, sorry. Gary says, let's talk about your midlife crisis. Your storytelling is getting better and better. So you have a lot of room to run. What are your thoughts about what's next? Yes, so in my last video, I talked about the struggles I've been having for the past, you know, four or five months with my channel and the direction I want to take it and how I've been feeling like I'm telling the same story over and over. And on my personal level, I feel it's a little stagnant, but I realize to the viewer, it's different every time. I'm in a different place, in a different landscape, talking to different people. But my formula to make these videos has been essentially the same. Um, so that's more what I've been struggling with, with is like, okay, I want to evolve as a storyteller and a creator. I don't want to keep doing the same thing so that when you watch a doozer video, you know, essentially exactly what's going to happen. I don't want it to be formulaic like that. I want it to be new and, and creative and I want to really feel proud of what I'm doing. And I do feel proud of the content that I've been making, but I've just been, I don't know wrestling in my mind with uh, where do I go from here? And I know that sounds scary. Like, no, I'm not going anywhere. My channel is going to stay here. I realize that I am so incredibly fortunate to have this channel and to have all of you. And it took me seven years to build it up to the size that it is now. I am very grateful for, for YouTube. I just think I would like to try something new. And I don't quite know what that means yet. Maybe it's a different form of storytelling. Maybe it's completely different stories. You know, a couple of years ago before the pandemic, I did a series called Running with Ryan, where I would run with elite athletes and interview them. And that was really cool. But I stopped doing it because of the pandemic, obviously couldn't be, you know, running next to people. Um, so I, I'm, you know, I'm making a list of, of new things that I can do and new ways of telling stories to you that I think are, are valuable and inspirational. Because at the end of the day, I want you to watch my videos and say, wow, I want to get on my bike and go do something, or I want to go run, or I want to go challenge myself. Uh, that's the goal. So, uh, yeah. Um, did I answer your question? Sorry, I think I have a little bit of COVID brain right now. It's like a little foggy. <laughs> but thank you, Gary, for that question and the $10. I appreciate it. Uh, Arlene says, we never know what's going to happen, Ryan. That's why we watch. All we know is that you will ride a bike. That's true. And before the pandemic, I did a lot more running videos. And I haven't done nearly as many of those. And I know that my audience now is very bike heavy. So my running videos don't do as well as they used to because most people on this channel want to see bike content. And all of a sudden, I pop up on a running video. And people are like, ah, I want to see a bike video, not a boring running video. So, you know, we'll see where I take things, but uh, when it comes down to it, I just want to have fun, obviously, personally, but also share something of value with you. James, what's up? Thank you for the five bucks. Thanks for the great videos and amazing energy you give to the universe. It does so much good. 
I appreciate that. That really means the world to me. And after I made my most recent video, I got lots of comments like this. And that's what motivates me to keep going is hearing from you and hearing that these stories really affect you in a positive way, because that is the that is the number one goal. And so I'm glad to hear that you're still enjoying my content. That's really what is important to me. But I also want to be true to myself at the same time and uh, feel very proud of, of what I'm doing. And so stay tuned. The, this channel's not going anywhere. I'll be creating and putting out those olays and love into the world. Oh, somebody just asked, hey, are you going to upgrade to DJI's new Mini 3 drone? I already ordered it. I ordered it this morning. Yes, I'm excited about the new Mini 3 drone. It uh, seems to be quite a bit better quality. Battery life is better. So, you know, I'm always looking for ways and essentially tools to help me tell my stories. That's what all my cameras are. They're tools. You know, I'm not a huge gearhead. I don't geek out on camera stuff, but I definitely try to have the best gear, camera gear, to be able to tell you really exciting, fun stories. And I know that drone footage is just stunning. It's so beautiful. And it's it's opened up a whole new avenue to show viewers what it's like to be out there and to show the scope of some of these landscapes. And I'm so grateful for whoever invented these tiny drones this is footage that you could only get 10 years ago with a helicopter. And now anybody with 500 bucks can buy a drone and get pretty cinematic drone footage. So, uh, yep, I'm getting the new drone and hopefully I don't lose it or get it stuck in a tree. <laughs> because you all know that that happens. All right. Bong Mayer says, we love you, Ryan. You are such an inspiration. My family and I started to do outdoor activities because of your channel. Thank you so much. I love, I love those. I love those comments. I love it. I love hearing from you. Never be shy to email me or comment me, comment to me, telling me that you're getting outside and getting after it. Because that, again, that's the main goal with everything that I, that I do in life. I want to inspire people to challenge themselves in whatever way, shape or form that is. And Bong Mare, I like that name. Johnny Five says, Ryan, you've reminded me that some of my fondest memories are of riding a bike. Thank you for inspiring me to get back out there and to drag my kids along for the ride. That's so cool. I love hearing about families getting out there. And some of my best childhood memories are definitely when I was a kid learning how to ride a bike and my dad putting on the training wheels and pushing me behind uh, on the seat and, uh, you know, lots of tipping over and crying and tantrums, but you learn. And that's what's fun about trying anything new. And at first, obviously it's scary, but then you get the hang of it and you build confidence and you feel really good about yourself. And that's like anything in life, any adventure. And it doesn't have to be like, an, like a physical adventure. It could be a mental adventure, something that you're trying completely new. Um, Sarah Hockman says, a get out there podcast. I've thought about that podcasts are way less work. <laughs> you don't have to travel and travel with uh, lots of cameras and gear to put together stories. So I've definitely thought about a podcast, but there's so many podcasts out there in the world. I just don't know if there needs to be another one, but uh, that could definitely happen. 26 Real MC, thank you for the 10 bucks. He says, I think you would do a great podcast. Well, yeah, maybe I can take on Joe Rogan. I can be the next Joe Rogan. What do you think about that? <laughs> uh, might be a different vibe, but I would like to have his size audience for sure. Jaime Gonzalez, no question, Ryan. Just a big thank you from El Chuco. Thank you for all the time. Take all the time you need to regroup and do your thing. Thank you. Jaime, you always are sending me wonderful, heartfelt messages, and I really appreciate it. Katz just said, you don't talk about your dad. Is he still with us? So this is a question I get a lot. Yes, my dad is alive. He lives in Tennessee. My parents got divorced when I was six and my mom raised us. So I would see my dad about once a week growing up. Um, he's a great guy. He's a nice dude. Um, but my mom is definitely, you know, somebody who I had a lot more contact with growing up with. And uh, 
So my dad's going to actually be in Boulder next week. He's going to come out here and I'm going to see my dad for the first time in many years. And I'm excited to see, to see him yeah, for sure. All right. OD Green Outdoors. Thank you for the $4.99. People go watch Out of the Wild Venezuela starring Ryan. <laughs> so if you don't know, I was on a Discovery Channel survival show called Out of the Wild Venezuela. It was filmed back in 2010. It aired worldwide in 2011. And that was the most difficult adventure of my life by far. Hands down, the hardest thing I've ever done. Why was it hard? Because we pretty much starved for 30 days straight while we were tromping through the jungles of Venezuela. And you might think that my bikepacking food is gross, like Nutella and beans and whatever else. But uh, what we ate out there when we could find food were termites, grub worms, anything with calories. So if you want to watch a show, you want to see me get really skinny and cry a lot, <laughs> uh, Google Out of the Wild Venezuela. I think it's on Apple TV. You can probably find some bootleg versions on Vimeo. Thank you, OD Green. So Chris says, as I sit here watching you after my run, I see a lot of families biking down our street. Finally, some warm weather here in Manitoba. You know, Manitoba is just north of here. And uh, it's definitely warm here in Boulder, too. I'm so excited for the summertime. I'm sorry, everybody in the Southern Hemisphere who are going into winter. But we in the Northern Hemisphere are getting ready for summer. And we can't wait, right? Whoop, whoop. I'm going to take another sip. Give me a second. Mm. Okay. Uh, hey, Will Z from DC, my birthday twin. How you doing, buddy? <laughs> I always love when people show up that I haven't heard from in a while. It's awesome. It is awesome. So looks like just a name did a 100 mile off-road cycling race. Thanks for the inspiration. The Bear 100 in Wisconsin. That's awesome. Thank you for sharing your victory stories with me. Masumi Hirota, thank you for the burrito money. I appreciate it. Oh, Edward Hill wants to know if I have plans to go to, in quotation marks, the playa. What that means is Burning Man. I have some Burning Man videos on my channel. If you want to look for them, they're very entertaining. Burning Man is a giant temporary city out in the deserts of uh, Nevada. And there's about 80,000 people that go. And it's all about art and expression. And it's also a place where I run a 50 kilometer ultra marathon. And uh, it hasn't happened for the last two years. Why? The pandemic. So I do hope to go to the playa this year. It is definitely one of my favorite places in the world. Bob Raymond from New Hampshire. Thank you. Just says, feel better soon. My throat is, uh, it's getting a little, a little dry. So I think let's do... Um, Let's do five or 10 more minutes of this. And then I'm just going to go to bed for like eight hours. I really appreciate you all being here. This really has lifted my spirits on a weekend where I really needed my spirits lifted. COVID is not fun. Not that it's been a bad case of COVID, but it's just I've had to cancel everything. And I haven't been able to see Amelia or my mom on Mother's Day. Hey, Ryan, show us your new girlfriend. Okay, maybe I can find a photo and I can show. Uh, hopefully, Amelia doesn't care. Let's see. Um, I'll find a photo and I'll show it to the camera here. So, Amelia is my new girlfriend and she is amazing. I want to find one of these good photos. Let's see. Um, da, da, da. I promise I'll get to it here soon. Here we go. Oh, wait, not that one. Where is it? Where's your good photo of us? Okay, here we are. Here we are. Can you see that? There she is. Look how cute she is. And you know what else is in this photo? A bouncy castle. You know how much I love bouncy castles? I love them a lot. This was at my brother's house. He was having an Easter party and they had a bouncy castle. That's Amelia. You're so pretty. <laughs> and you will see her on my channel at some point. Actually, she's already been on my channel. She paced me in the Leadville 100 last year when I didn't really even know who she was. So you'll see her on my channel. We'll get her out on a bike. She's a wonderful human, and she has made me a very, very happy man. Alvaro Rivas, thank you for the $10, man. I appreciate it. 
Secretariat 1999. Wow, you guys are so generous. I really, I mean, this, ah, my heart, mi corazón está creciendo. My heart is growing. Thank you so much. Mike Pence, is that the, is this, is this Vice President Mike Pence in the, the, in the chat here? It says, Amelia is a goddess. She sure is, man. Thank you, Mike Pence, um, Mr. Vice President. Um, OD Green says she is very beautiful. Yes, yeah, she's definitely beautiful. Amir says cute people. Yeah, we are so cute. Um, can I speak some Swedish? Okay, Rage Master wants to hear Swedish. All right, so I lived in Sweden as an exchange student uh, back in 97, 98. I lived with the host family, went to Swedish school and everything. And Sweden has a very special place in my heart. So it's always hard just to speak Swedish. If somebody tells me to say something specific, it works better. But let's just say, Jag ska flytta, nej, inflytta. Jag ska resa till Sverige i sommar. Och jag ska cykla hela Sverige. Och jag kan inte vänta. Det ska bli jättekul. Did any of you understand that? Only if you're Swedish would you understand that. I essentially just said, I'm going to Sweden this summer and I'm going to ride my bike the length of Sweden and I can't wait. And some of you might know some Swedish. You've A lot of you have seen the movie Dumb and Dumber, right? At the very end of the movie, when Harry and Lloyd are walking down the road and a bus comes by and these babes come out in bikinis, one of them says, hey, Yalupa, right when she walks off the bus. And that means, hello, everybody. Hey, Yaliupa. So there is your Swedish language lesson of the day uh, from mainstream American media. All right. Um, Alexi Paredes, thank you for the $9.99. What happened to eating burritos, bro? Well, maybe you got here late, bro, but I've been eating. I've been trying to eat burritos this whole time, um, but I've been talking too much. We started off well, you know, with the burritos and the uh, the Valentina hot sauce, and I got my Humex here, so I'm having like a nice Mexican fiesta by myself as I'm dealing with COVID. Kevin Decker, thank you for the ten bucks. I appreciate it. Rene Acevedo, thank you for the five bucks. Um, Al, thank you for twenty bucks. Damn, this is big. You guys are throwing some big money at me. Thank you so much. Michigan, tons of rail trails and interconnected snowmobile trails. I've heard that about Michigan. Uh, Michigan is definitely. Uh, a beautiful place to ride a bike. When I did Love Cycles, we rode across Michigan and we hit some of those ra rail trails. The Fred Meyer Trail, I think I remember. That was really cool. I'm a big fan of rail trails. They're just such a great way to, you know, bike or walk or run where you don't have to deal with traffic. And they're usually covered by trees. So they're nice and cool. It blocks all the sun. Um, I There's a whole organization called railstotrails.org and they take abandoned rail lines and turn them into recreation areas. And uh, so we're getting more and more around the United States, which is very, very cool. Patrice LeMay say, says, Amelia is hot and a great athlete. Yes, she is. <laughs> uh, so uh, Joel Prades just said he's from France, but lives in Montreal. What tent do you use? So I've been using the Big Agnes Fly Creek for the past four years. It's a great bike packing tent. I did just buy the Nemo Dragonfly, which is their version of a bike packing tent. I haven't used it yet. I set it up in my house, but it looks pretty cool. Um, let's see. <laughs> Mike Pence, you're funny. Amelia is a corporate lawyer for Apple, so Ryan will be a kept man. <laughs> Uh, that's funny. She is a corporate lawyer. She is one of those people that she's just a little ass kicker. Sorry, excuse my language, but she's uh, one of those people who <laughs> she's accomplished a lot in life. Eric Perramond. Yo, Doozer, thanks for the great Leadville training and race vlogs. Those were great. And have them on infinite repeat as I'm tackling Leadville this August. Sweet. I will be there. I'm doing the Leadville 100 again. So make sure to come say hi to me, buddy, and we can share some miles. That is an amazing race. The energy is off the charts. Andrew Livingston, thank you. Thank you for the 10 bucks. I appreciate it. Um, I don't know where this money goes. It's not like, you know, coming out of my computer right now, but I imagine it'll all go to my AdSense account. <laughs> so thank, thank you all so much for being so generous. I really appreciate it. I really, really appreciate it. Oh, we got Por La Vida en Bicicleta. Saludos desde Chihuahua, Mexico. Viva Mexico, amigo. Uh, Mike Pence, again, Vice President Mike Pence wants to know, did you ever make it back to Honduras to see the kids? 
I've been back five times. I've been back many times. And it's because those kids mean so much to me. I didn't want to just leave them after living there for two and a half years and never see them again. So I've been back five times and they are not kids anymore. They are young adults. I left Honduras in 2005. They, I chat with them a lot on Facebook and uh, I hope to go back in the next year or so because Honduras is a, a wonderful place. And I spent some formative years of my life there and those kids mean a lot to me. Okay. All right. I think I'm going to do this for, uh, let's do this for six more minutes. So that will take me to 7 p.m. Colorado time before my voice completely goes. Um, how long does a tent last in bikepacking use? I don't know. I've had one for four years, the big Agnes, and it's perfect. I mean, it's still as good as day one. I guess it just depends how you treat it. And it depends on if you're camping on a bed of thorns in Baja or something. Uh, say hi to Brazil, Mario Nicolau. Okay, Brazil. I will come to Brazil someday, I promise. Looks like he's in a town called Curitiba in the southern south southern part of Brazil. Um, gear review while I'm... Somebody's like, hey, you should make a gear review while you're in lockdown. Uh, I probably should. I should do something this week while I'm sitting at home doing nothing. Somebody just said bike back to Honduras. Yeah, maybe someday. That would be pretty cool. Oh, here's some big news. Let's end off on this. So when I rode home from Honduras, every single night I wrote in a journal, hoping that someday I would put all of these journals into a book. And when I got home, I started writing a book. This is way back in 2005, 2006. And I just got overwhelmed. Writing is, you know, very hard. And I started doing video and I put it on a back burner. And I essentially never touched it. And I kind of moved away from my idea of writing a book about my Honduras adventure. And then last year, I got motivated again to get back on it. And I hired somebody to help me put it all together and go through all of my journals. And so this fall, hopefully, I will have the book out. The book is done. I just hope that it gets all printed and everything out by this fall. For the holiday season, um, the book is amazing. And it chronicles my adventures from Honduras to Boulder and everything in between and my philosophy on an adventure in life. And it's a look into 25-year-old Ryan in my headspace at that time and starting to look at the world in a different way and looking toward the future and what am I going to do with my life? Because when I was 25 years old, I didn't know. I left Honduras. I graduated college, went to Honduras for two years. And then I was like, okay, what am I going to do? How am I going to make money? What's what's my career going to be? And at the time, I thought I, I might work for the State Department or, or work for an international aid organization because I've always loved traveling internationally and, and helping people. Um, I didn't end up doing that, but uh, I think I get to do that in a way through my videos. And I decided, you know, back in 2006, like, I want to be a storyteller. I want to find a way to make money through telling stories. And that's when I started at Public Access TV and then started working for different TV networks and then slowly work, working my way to the Travel Channel and other networks. And uh, then I was like, you know what? I don't like the TV world. I'm going to be a YouTuber. So seven years ago, I decided to start a YouTube channel and try to create a living by being a YouTuber and telling stories, important stories that I think bring value to the world. And here we are. I have a great channel. You're all right here with me right now. This means the world to me. And this is quite the tangent. I don't know how I got started on this because I'm talking about my book. My book is coming out Hopefully this fall, it's really, really good. I think you will love it. Mark Lemon says, Doozer for president of Bike Land. I will take that nomination and your vote. Where's Bike Land? Holland? Boulder? <laughs> uh, you're all so wonderful. And the book will be called The Long Way Home. You like that? Because I took The Long Way Home. Most Peace Corps volunteers, when they finish service, you know, get flown home by the, the U.S. government. But I cashed in my ticket and used that money. It was like $600 to put towards a bicycle. And I used that money to ride my bike home to Boulder, taking the long way home. And I'm really excited to share it with all of you. It's, uh, it's exciting. So uh, with that, my friends, it is 
two minutes till seven here in Colorado. Thank you all so much once again for being part of this channel, part of this community. I'm trying to like, my, my face keeps on getting in the sun right here. That's why I'm getting so close to the camera. Thank you. It really means the world to me. You're all wonderful. Thank you for interacting and in all these wonderful questions here today. And I will be creating content this spring and summer. Don't you worry. I'm not going anywhere. I love you all. And let's finish off with the ole, 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 ole. <laughs> all right. Um, I think that's it. It's uh, 7 p.m. here. Oh, thank you, Will. What? Did Will just give me $49.99? Thank you, Will. That is amazing. Thank you. I appreciate it. You're so nice. Maybe I'll stay on longer so you can keep on giving me money. No, just kidding. It's not about money. I really appreciate you all. Uh, stay tuned for my next video and tell um, tell all your friends to, to watch my channel. That's the best way for this thing to grow. You know, share it word of mouth. Uh, the bigger the channel gets, the more content I can make, the more revenue I make because of ads and all that stuff. So uh, keep sharing it. Share the good word. I love you all. I love you all. I love you. Te amo. Un placer conocerlos a todos. And stay tuned for the next adventure. I am out of here. Adios.